Uh, hi guys. Uh, Cook speaking. Uh, the author of Forex, a uh, broker killer. Yeah. So before I start, I'm just gonna finish something just quickly here. Yeah? Just before I start. Uh, with part one. Uh, before I, I, I start with part one, I uh, remember a few days back I've, I, I was doing part zero that was uh, basically covering from birth, which is precisely uh, 1995 uh, till at least 2009 of my story, you know. And the logic behind or the motion behind me telling you guys these things is so that you can get to see that behind this fleshy lifestyle that you are seeing right now uh, the affordability that you're seeing right now we have I've, I've personally been through shit you understand you know and I'm, I'm not going to, to hide anything. I'm going to put each and everything as, as raw as it is precisely, you know. So I'm not going to hide anything. So I'm going to be taking it from, from part one, which is from 2010 of my story. In case you're new, uh, part zero is available on my timeline. Uh, I think it's the second last post uh, before the post of the car, the mysterious car which people have been waiting for. And it might exist and it might not exist. So just stay tuned uh, to see. So yeah. Uh, remember on the part zero, I was on 2009. I ended things in 2009 when I was going to uh, I was going to grade 10 that was in 2010 you know uh, I passed my my grade 9 in 2009 however I was basically condoned you know I didn't really pass it uh, very well I was condoned and all that you know and I was taken out of the private school that I was studying in and I was taken to a public school and I was not happy about the decision, you know, uh, but nonetheless, it is what it is, you know. Now, 2010, uh, I went to a public uh, high school uh, where I was going to be doing my, my grade. It was grade 10, yes. And that was during a World Cup, you know, that was during the time World Cup was 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 coming in South Africa at that time, you know. And I was not happy about the fact that I was taken out of a private school to a public one. But I, I now that I've grown, I actually do understand my mother's, my mother's reasons because I'm much more matured compared to back in the days, you know. So 2010, I was going for my grade... Uh, 10 in Lolo High School, just a small school around Limpopo province. Uh, I did my grade 10 there and my parents wanted me to to do the science stream so that maybe I can I can become a doctor, like the first doctor in the family or the first lawyer in the family, a nurse, whatsoever, you know, those normal professions which we always dream about, pilot and so forth. And I didn't want any of those things because all I ever wanted was to be a DJ. But you know how it is. Uh, your parents would never support you uh, if you tell them that you want to be a DJ or a rapper. You know how it is. So I had to do what I did in order to survive. So I, I chose the commercial stream. I chose the commercial stream, stream which which uh, used to consist of ac your accounting 
and I took maths literacy instead. You know, that was during my grade 10 period. Now, everything was going so fine in the new school, you know. Everything was going so fine. Uh, not, not much complaints and all that. And besides, I've actually had my, my, my childhood best friend there studying with him. So it was not as bad as I thought it would be, you know. Now, around March 2010, that's when I said to myself, okay, because of peer pressure, I said to myself, now I need to start this dating thing, you know. I need to start this dating thing. Remember, I, I discovered masturbating in 2008. And then I decided to start dating two years later. That means like from almost 2008 till 2010. That's when I, I decided, Khurmanam, and let me start this dating thing, you know. Let me start this dating thing and see how it goes, you know. And... Obviously, I got tips from my friends, you know, this is how you hit on a girl, you know. So there was this girl, there was this girl I had a huge crush on, you know. And funny enough, you see this life thing, this life thing is fucked up, guys. Because all the people that I've had crushes on back in the days, now they are not what they used to be anymore. I don't know what's going on, eh? If, if... If you have upgraded in life, just thank God for that. Because I've noticed that it's quite easy to fall in life, honestly. You know? But it's fine. So there was this girl I used to crush on. She was beautiful. Just a small, tiny girl. She was doing grade 8. So the sad part about it is that she, she came directly from primary school. She didn't know anything about dating, precisely. You know? So my mom would buy me a ch i would ask my mom to buy me ps chocolate the ones which have messages like i like you and so forth so my mom would buy them for for me to eat as lunch as part of my lunch when i go to school but instead i used to take those chocolates and i would send someone to give the girl you know and she would always return my gifts she was not really interested in that you know until I came to a conclusion that I mean, this girl is still young. She's still young. Maybe I'm too old for her, you know. Keep in mind, that time, 2010, I've never been kissed before. I've never been kissed before, you know. Like, literally, I'm, 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 I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin in everything. I'm a virgin in kiss. I'm a virgin in, in having sex. The only thing that I used to master that you didn't tell me about is masturbating because personally I feel like I'm the one who discovered it, you know, uh, given the confidence that I have. Now, um, when I went to visit my grandmother in the, back in the village, because at that time we moved to a Kasinyana, so just a small uh, developing Kasi. Even though at the Kasi, there were like two portions. There's a developed Kasi, then the other one was still developing, whereby I was still staying in a shack. Remember, I stayed in a shack from 2006 until uh, the present time that I'm referring to right now, which is 2010. So I was still staying in a shack that time. So when I went to visit my grandmother, and then I started having this crush on another girl, you know? Now... This one, my cousin helped me in, 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 he helped me basically to, to actually get access to her, you know. I used to send my cousin, my cousin would uh, speak on my behalf and so forth, you know, tell her that, you know what, remember, that time I was not even coach. You guys don't really know who you are following, basically. I was not even coach. This coach thinks... They, were, they didn't exist at that time, you know. So, my cousin would say, tell her, Hopoto wants you, he loves you, and so forth. And then the girl would say yes, uh, you know. And my cousin would bring back the news to me, and then we are, we are dating just like that. So, it was, it was that relationship, yeah, Hore, we don't meet, we don't talk, we don't hug, we don't kiss. It's just known on the streets that we are dating, but 
we are we are we are never together we can never be seen together i'm scared of her she's scared of me you know and her birthday came while we were in that relationship i don't know if it's a relation it was a relationship or a what i don't know which title was that because no kissing no hugging nothing not that she was saying no to anything but because i didn't know what to do at that time i didn't know how to kiss i didn't know i was just scared and burning inside and then at that time i've had assumptions that the way i'm so scared of girls because my other friend already started he was kissing girls already i i i asked myself how does one person know that they are gay i don't know if i'm making sense because obviously there are two types of gays in this world there are gays who are obviously gays. You don't need a ruler to see that this guy is gay. You understand? And the second type, it's normal straight guys, but internally they are gays. You understand? I'm sure you've seen that. And some of you guys who are on this live, you are gays, but you are hiding. Some of you guys, you are gays, but you don't know it as yet. You know? So I've been wondering to myself, can it happen that I might be gay because of the way I'm so scared of this girl, you know? But I'm like, nah, if I was gay, I'm sure I would have felt something when a guy touches me. Or I would have, I would have had a, a secret crush on a guy. And I'm like, nah. And even when I masturbate, I actually use normal porn. Like a normal porn, a, a guy and a lady. Uh, I don't watch gay porn. So it means that I'm straight. I just need to learn this thing, you know. I just need to develop myself into this thing, you know. So her birthday came, the girlfriend, 2010. Her birthday came. Obviously, I didn't have money at that time. So I thought about it. I'm like, what's the plan? What gift can I get her? Because back in the days, you wouldn't dare waste money and buy a black girl flowers she would prefer a time instead you know back in the days so i'm like flowers i'm like your flowers are expensive I, I can't really afford them if they were like 20 rents or 30 rents i wouldn't afford 30 rents at that time so given the fact that i'm actually a dj even though my parents don't support it and around 2010 those who are in Limpopo, they know a lady by the name of Pleasure. She, she creates the best hits when it comes to wedding songs. Limpopo wedding songs. So I'm like, what's the plan? Okay, I went to the Indians and I bought a disc, you know, an empty disc uh, for three rands. Yeah, for three rands. And even that three rands, I'm sure I had to save up for it. Then I, 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 I bought the empty disc and then I... I I asked one of my friends to burn, like to burn these wedding songs on the disc. So he burned all the nice wedding songs at that time. You know, wedding songs were a vibe. Just like the same way you guys are vibing to piano right now. I'm a piano. It's the same way we were vibing to wedding songs. I was playing wedding songs. There was nothing wrong with that at that time, obviously. Uh, right now, I wouldn't dare, trust me. So I burned the CD Vela wedding songs. Then after I, I, I sent my cousin to take the CD Vela directly to her as a birthday gift, you know. And it made me realize something that sometimes saying that you don't have money is just an excuse to make your partner happy. You know, you just need to think out of the box. It's the thought that counts. You know, you know what they say about girls? They say that it's the little things that matters. Hey, the girl was so happy. Like she was so happy. Keep in mind, I only spent about three rents buying the CD. Had I found the CD free, I would have spent zero. But she was extremely happy. She was excited that, oh, my boyfriend is so romantic, burning, uh, we call it orita in our language, burning wedding songs for me on a CD, you know? And then whenever I would pass at the street, I would hear the songs playing at her house. I would know that that's the CD I gave her. You understand? So she was happy. Now, as time went by, uh, I've decided that, you know, now I need to step out of my comfort zone, 
we need to take the relationship to the next level, right? And the next level at that time was not having sex, no. The next level at that time was to meet and at least kiss, you know? So uh, my cousin arranged the meeting. So it was late, around 10 p.m., you know, around 10 p.m. So we went there. We went there. I was at my grandmother's place at that time. So we went there and we spent almost like five hours, like from 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, almost until 3 a.m. in the morning, you know. Uh, at that time, we were just sitting, talking as a groupie. I haven't kissed her, you know. And whenever I would try to get close to her, she would run. You know, I didn't understand whether my mouth was smelling at that time or I don't know how to approach situations like that. You know, it was very, very tough. So we'd end up going home around four in the morning. And then when we go home, because we're staying with our grandmother. So when we left the house, basically we got out of the window, you know, we got out of the window. So we left the window unclosed like we opened the window and then when we got out we we made sure that it's not fully closed so that when we come back we can get in ah uh, kanti the grandmother noticed that this fuckers are not here this fuckers are gone i don't know how she has seen it but she noticed and then she closed the window remember we left the window as a platform that when we come back we're gonna open and enter so she wouldn't notice that we were there grandmother noticed she closed the window so now we were forced when we came back we tried to open the window it's not opening so she just found us sleeping outside the door six in the morning when she wakes up and the first thing that we had was getting beaten you know she was beating us left right center and when i remind her today when i remind my grandmother today it's like it was never her, you know. She's even apologizing for it. <laughs> apologizing for beating us. But yeah, that's that's how we, we grew up. Whenever you do anything out of the way or out of proportion, you get beaten, you know. So we got beaten. And then when we were getting beaten, there were people passing on the street. They could see. And then the news would get to the girl. And then the girl would eventually want to dump me because I got beaten. So I had to... to to act like a man, act tough and all that, you know. But nah, life went on around 2010. So school-wise, uh, I was actually one of uh, the smartest kids in my class, right? The reason why I'm telling you this is so that you can understand, even though I got chased out of university multiple times, but I got chased because partially it was a choice that I want to make, that I made, I mean, you know. Uh, if had I wanted to pass, I would have passed. I would have been a graduate, you know. Uh, it was just not something that I'm feeling. So I was one of the smartest kids. I would say out of top 10, I was there. And then out of top 5, I was there on certain subjects. And then maybe a few subjects, I was always number one, you know, especially math literacy. Math literacy, I used to be... Uh, an A student when it comes to maths literacy. So our life went on, uh, grade 10, valley, things went on. But eventually that relationship uh, didn't work out, you know. And then we were going towards uh, the end of the year. That was, I think, that was during World Cup or World Cup was over at that time. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember very well. So we we're going towards the end of the year. And I was talking to my cousin. I'm like, boy, I don't want to go to 2011 without getting laid. You know, I need to have sex. I can feel it in my blood. I need to have sex. You know, I must have one. You know, but girlfriend did the lolo. Girlfriend did the lolo at that time. I could say, um, I could literally teach myself how to do this thing with this girl you know but before i i get to that part 2010 2010 was the first time i've actually won a label in my life so you can count from 1995 till 2010 the first time i've won a label in my life that was an adidas t-shirt 
uh, specifically for the World Cup. That was the first, first time, you know, that I've, I've won label in my life, you know. And there were other kids who were having labels all their lives, you know. Rena, I, I feel like this poverty thing has actually brought in anger inside us that the day we make it, witches will feel it. So don't be surprised when I'm like this, guys. This is pain that I've experienced from a long time. And the only way for me to get it out is now, you know? Like when I'm able to do things for myself, talking nonsense all the time, that's me getting the pain out, you know, the pain of poverty and oppression and all that. So... Hello.